So yesterday we talked about uh, why to learn C language, right? We talked about compiler a little bit. We talked about basic data types such as integer, float, character. The range of integer that you can store using an integer variable varies based on compilers. But for modern compilers, which are 64-bit compilers like Visual Studio, GCC, it's quite a lot, okay? So far we know that printf function is used to display the output of the program on the screen. Right, and we are going to study in detail the specifics of this printf function. You know, what is this percent %f? What is this uh, backward slash n? I'm going to talk about everything. But for now, we understand that to display something onto the screen, we use printf function. Right? This is a function provided to us by C language. We are just using it as it is. Does that make sense? Awesome. Okay, Chloe, what is compiler? Is that thing that um, translates our language into the the computer language zero and one? Awesome. So you can say z equal to x plus y. So these kinds of instructions are called as arithmetic instructions, right? Where you are performing some arithmetic operations. Most of the programs that we write. And then we have third type of instructions you will find generally in C programs is kind of like if something, then do something, else do something, right? This kind of instructions are called as control structure, right? So you are you are deciding to do something if some condition is true, otherwise you will do something else. This is one example. Another example is uh, looping. For example, you want to write a program to print table of a number. You understand table of number, right? Mm. Okay, so for, I don't know what, what they call it in French. Yeah, mm. maybe that, maybe, yeah, I know, but I just don't know the word. Right, so something like this. Okay, got it, got it. Ça se dit comment en français? La table. <laughs> I okay. couldn't guess, but I wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, awesome. La table. Très bien. So, if we want to write a program, in a C program to print a table of a number, right? So yeah. we might have to use a loop like uh, n equal to 5. Now I'm writing an algorithm, okay? We talked about this yesterday. And then say yeah. another variable i equal to 1. And I'll say from i equal to 1 to 10, right? Print uh, i into 5. Right? This is my plan. I'll declare two variables. One, the number whose table I want to print. And I'll use one counter, i. And I'll say from i equal to 1 to i becomes 10. Keep printing i into 5. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. Basically, in this program, what will happen? This instruction, printing of i into 5, will be repeated 10 times. The same instruction will get executed 10 times. So this is called as loop. And in C programming language, they give us certain, uh, certain ways to write these loops. When it comes to arithmetic instructions, uh, we need to know some basic operators, right? And uh, the most basic operators are plus for addition, okay? Minus for subtraction, star for multiplication. Star is also used for some other purpose called as pointers in C which we are going to learn very soon and which is going to, which is going to give you nightmares. Koshmar, Kush, Kush, right, in French? Okay. Okay. And then we have, this is forward slash. It is used for division. Another one is this. This is used to get the remainder of a division operator. This is called as mod operator. For example, 5 mod 2. This will give you the remainder. What is the remainder here? This is 1. 1. Right. So this is mod operator, this is division, multiplication, subtraction, and addition. So these are the basic operators which you need. This is called as assignment operator. So when you say a equal to 5, right, you're assigning the value 5 to a, right? And there's one more operator, which is comparison operator, which is double equal to, which means you can use it like this. If a equal equal to 5 here you're not assigning 5 to a you're comparing 
A's value is equal to 5 or not. Capital A, ASCII value is 65. A zero, character zero on your keyboard has ASCII value of 48. Okay. So automatically if you see, capital B has ASCII value of 66. Okay. So technically, technically, if you say, if you, what the hell? If you see, if you declare two variables like character ch1, ch2, right, and you assign ch1 equal to a and ch2 equal to c, right, semicolon, and you can, if you try to print, you can print percent d ch1 plus ch2. So can you tell me what will be the output of this thing? 132 awesome yeah so but it doesn't make any sense to store two characters and then use addition operator on them all right because yeah. what's the use but it is technically possible because characters are stored as ascii values uh, their corresponding ascii values in the memory type conversion in some languages such as java you will see that this is called as type casting what does this mean? This means is that you have to convert the data from one data type to another data type. For example, float a, I will say a equal to 5 divided by 2. Okay. So, what do you think if I try to print a, what will be the answer? 2.5 right. Yeah, something like that, right? Unfortunately, that's not the case. Okay, so can you see the output here? Mm -hmm. So output is 2, not 2.5. Yeah. The reason behind this is in C language, uh, there's something called as internal uh, type casting or internal uh, type conversion. What does that mean? So if you see, this is the operation between two integers. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you are dividing one integer by another integer. So even though the actual result is 2.5, C will neglect the decimal part and C will convert the result into an integer. So now, if you don't want this to happen, right, what you can do is, I think this is the syntax. What you are telling C compiler is, I want to perform this operation, right, and I want you to convert the result into float, okay. So let's see if this, okay. this works. It does. Now the value is 2.5. You told C, no, I want the answer in float. So this is called as explicit type conversion. So what you are trying to say is convert this, which you know is going to be integer, into float and then assign it to x. Arithmetic operation between an integer and integer always gives you integer result. Uh, any operation between a float and float, they call it as real, all the decimal things, will always give you real. Real is the combined terminology they are using for both uh, float and double. And the operation between an integer and a real always yields a real result. So 5 by 2 will give you 2. 5.0 divided by 2 will give you 2.5. Because one is float. Here one is float, here both are floats. Is that clear now? Yeah. Okay. Any software you write is going to be, there is going to be some data. Okay. Then there's going to be your program. Right. And based on this data, you're going to give some kind of information, service or output. That's the basic fundamental of programming. There's no program which just consumes data and doesn't do anything. As in like life, with data that people enter, you will have choices to make. So, for example, when you are signing up for Facebook or any website, right? You have to uh, rompli a uh, formulaire, no? You have to fill out a form. And then uh, when it asks for your name, you can basically write your name as uh, 007 chica underscore fee. Do you think that will accept this name in your registration form? Yeah, no. Right. So, 
so the program has to decide if name entered is something like 007 chica fee raise error it will give you validation error that this is not allowed please tell me your real name you are not a born girl so this is the key aspect of any programming language and you will find this syntax if condition then do this right else do this this is like a syntax that you will find in javascript java python c++ any goddamn programming language in the world okay this is universal and this is the reason why we learn c first because we get used to using these things and then we are not surprised when we find this syntax in other languages okay okay uh, usually how they evaluate this thing is uh, something called as boolean value so the condition has to be true for then the compiler will execute this if the condition evaluates to false then the compiler will execute this integer x equal to 5 mm -hmm. if x less than 5 print printf whatever uh, hello yeah okay that was very effort <laughs> else print uh, bonjour okay. so what will be the output of this program it's printing bonjour it should but it will not yeah but i don't know why that's what I'm, i don't know why it's a trick question. no it's because Stop. Yeah, you put it stop. Okay. It's because of this. You can't write semicolon after the if condition. That means the compiler will treat this as if x less than 5, blank statement, and then printf, whatever you are. So for him, if ends here, okay. Generally, we see if as uh, if uh, x less than 5 or if. Uh, uh, a equal equal to uh, k variable a equal equal to k or if uh, x mod 2 equal equal to 0 so we but sometimes you can actually find conditions like this okay yeah so the general rule and this is kind of specific to see anything that evaluates to 0 is considered as false any value which is non-zero is considered as true. How about this one? Yes. Why? Because you will think that it's 10, no? Yes, because, right, you have studied. <laughs> yeah, because this is not comparison. This is assignment. First, it will assign 10 to A, and then it will be like if 10, which is a non-zero number, so this will be true, and this will print. Even this will print, right? Sometimes you might have to write uh, something like and if the condition is true you want to execute n number of statements you just have to put them inside braces if there's only one statement you don't have to write this but if you write it no problem the condition is evaluates to true the compiler will execute this part if it evaluates to false compiler will execute this part and it will skip this part so then you use another if here condition in this case, this is called as inner if. Okay. And this is called as outer if. The general operators that you use in conditions is comparison operators. So this is less than, greater than, less than equal to, greater than equal to, well, comparison equal to, like is equal to, like is it equal to, and this is not equal to. This is the one probably you'll have to remember a little. Okay? Okay. Tell me what will be the output. Can you wait? Uh... I don't know. Yeah, you know the good news is even I don't know <laughs> because it's it's so stupid. But you know what? Let's let's just find out. X and Y are equal. Okay. Fine. That's why I didn't say you're right. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's just stupid. You know, I think it's it's the same rule. You remember operation between one float and one integer is float. Yeah. So I think it's applying the same rule and it's saying that okay. So I'm just going to, before comparing one integer and one float, I'm going to consider the integer as float. 
and then I'm going to compare. You remember we learned that rule previously that if it's operation between one integer and one float, it will uh, raise that integer to a float and then do the operation. Yeah. Yeah, this one, first one. Okay, float b if. Yeah, but they didn't put double equal. Awesome. Yeah, you are very intelligent. Was it Thesan Tunisia? I used to miss this thing when I was in college. Can you tell me what's the problem with this program? Okay, integer. Is the problem already there? <laughs> yes, kind of. It's not a syntactical error, but it's a. They have put the semicolon after the if condition. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm, okay. Let's write this. Yeah. So, absolute value is like. Uh, yeah, you, when it's 6, it's 6, right? Yeah, minus 6 is 6, 6 is 6. Yeah, yeah, I got so it. So, you, you remove the sign basically. So, let's take a number x equal to minus 10. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. what we need to do is we need to take another number y and we need to make its value 10. How do you make it 10? Minus x. Y equal to minus 1 into x. Okay, let's try that. If it's x less than 0, then minus 1 into x, right? Else x. Yeah. Good. No, but absolute value should... Is it always integer? Is what? It, no, we put float. Yeah, I know, but is it like if you give absolute value... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. It is float. If you give float, it's float. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good enough. 